Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Red X Podcast, where we talk about all the things that we need to know to be successful in our real estate careers. I've got David Knox with me. David, welcome back to the show. Thanks Thank for being with us again. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm excited today. We, uh, we're we going to talk uh, about sphere of influence, and, and you've got some amazing stuff that you're going to share with us. Um, thank you to everybody who's uh, who's with us. And and uh, as always, please chat in your questions, in, interact with us. This is, uh, this is how we get the information out that you need and that you want to make sure that we can help you in your careers, whether you're on Facebook, on YouTube, or on our webpage where we're posting this. Uh, you can chat into any of those channels and, and those questions will get relayed over to me and we'll get those over to David. So David, thank you so much. Uh, you, uh, you This is the second time on the show Right when you yep. came on, you you came on right at the height of uh, of everything turning upside down with COVID, uh, and now that things are are kind of we're seeing some some normalization and and things go uh, back to normal a little bit slowly but surely. Uh, I'm excited to dive into sphere of influence. So I, I want to start with one question here. Uh, and By the way, uh, I want to I want to can I interrupt you for one yeah, second? Please. Yeah, please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hold your question because I need to. Uh, one thing I want to say: you are true. We are starting to see some normalcy after we come out of the virus, but the whole bloody world knows that normalcy was tragically interrupted here in. I'm in Minneapolis, so I am at the epicenter of one of the more tragic things that has happened: the death of murder of George Floyd. It happened 30 blocks from here. So we in Minneapolis are horrified. We are saddened by this, as is the state and the in the world. So I just want our listeners to know I am here in the middle of it and uh, through all of it. And um, and I guess as a community here, we're looking how can we change the circumstances that caused this to happen. So uh, we've been chipping in, cleaning the city, delivering food, doing whatever we can to, to be part of the solution here. And uh, so I stand with all the people who are horrified by that and want to improve the conditions that, that made that possible. And then sadly in Atlanta uh, happens again. So it's a very difficult situation. And I find myself doing seminars, for, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years and in some very tragic times. So yeah. uh, and as I look at this, I will say one thing that is that transcends, and I hope this doesn't come across wrong, but one of the things that transcends tragedy is people want to go home. They want to buy, they want to sell, they want a place to live. and I, listeners on this are realtors and we need to help them do that and yep. i think home is more important than ever now so i just want to acknowledge that and uh before we continue on thank you and i and i appreciate that there the uh the effects have been far reaching uh, as we discussed prior to the show here it's it's uh uh it's good to be part of the solution so thank you for doing that and thank you for the things you're doing in your community yep. uh i want to i want to start the show off here as we talk about sphere of influence um I, I've got this question that we've written down that I've written down here. So I want to start with this and we can go wherever the conversation takes us. So sure. uh, let me start with this. What should agents be doing right now with their sphere of influence? Calling them. Okay. Tell me more. Period. Nobody does it. I have been doing, I don't know, I've done 3,500 seminars and, and I'll stand up in front of an audience and ask, Hey, how many of you have telephoned your sphere of influence? And uh, you know, everybody kind of looks away because they know they haven't done it. And maybe about 5% of them have done it. So when you take a look at the 95.5, there you go. I mean, it's a sign of it. You know, 95% of agents don't do anything and wonder why they don't have any money. And the 5% get on it. But I believe, uh, depending on who you go to, uh, you know, 80% of commission revenue uh, generated comes from sphere of influence. I mean, that's from that's where people buy and sell. Um, and I've heard some people say, well, Customers are moving away from referrals to online. And they're saying that online is because they're going online, they're not relying on their previous agents. And I will challenge that. And I will say they're going online because their previous agents haven't called. They got no place to go. I think they've got the cause and effect reversed. I mean, if somebody calls me and they are a good solution, I don't need to go online. So, I, 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 yeah, so I totally I agree with that. So I, I agree with that. I think that, um, you know, we often hear about the number one reason why people don't use their previous real estate agent a second time is because of lack of communication, whether that's during the transaction or more importantly, after the transaction. Yeah. And and uh, and that's that it, that is a problem. So let me dig a little more into this. Right. Because it's easy to say, hey, let's just get on the phone and call. If 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 somebody came and said, hey, help me set up some sort of system, right? How often should we be calling out to these people? What's the content of these phone calls? What are the, what, what should the conversations look like 
for an agent who's not doing this, how do they begin and, and set it up so that they're doing it effectively? All right. Well, I'll make sure we cover all of that now. Uh, what comes to mind when I do ask audiences, you know, you know, why haven't you called your sphere of influence? They give me some pretty good answers. So I want to acknowledge them. I don't want to I don't want to shame agents for thinking this. Uh, one of the answers I hear is I don't want to bother them. I get okay. that. Uh, that's a legitimate thing. I don't want to be a bother. And, if, you know, you get these people, they, they get into multi-level marketing. They call up, hey, I'm so excited. I'm like talking about an opportunity now for listening time. And entertainment. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And now we can introduce you to one of the finest ways you can increase. You know, and people don't want to be. They've had it done to them. They don't want to be that person. They don't want to bother them. And I am not going to suggest on today's presentation that they bother them. I am going to suggest that you have to interrupt them. So we'll talk about that. In a okay. so there's a difference between bothering and interrupting, and I will take you to that. Um, I think the other reason people don't call their sphere of influence is they don't know what to say. They don't have a dialogue. What do I say to these people? Uh, number three, that I don't want to be a salesperson. I don't want to be salesy. And of course, I remind them, you are a salesperson. I don't know why you're embarrassed to be one. But I understand that get. I don't like calling my friends and asking for business. So, uh, and those are legitimate reasons. I get that. So we've got to find a way to deal with that. And maybe a good way to kick this off would be um, last year, a woman who works for me named Erin, she had known her since she was a little girl. And uh, she does some part-time work for me. And Erin called up and said, I really hate my realtor. And I said, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> and she says, can you refer somebody to me? And I went, yeah, my gosh, I know a lot of agents here in the Twin Cities. I'd be happy to. And, uh, and then I said, well, why don't you work with my realtor? Why don't you work with uh, the woman who sold my home next door to your parents? Which is how I met Erin. And she, oh, well, is she good? Oh, she was great. Um, absolutely. She did a wonderful job for me. Work with her. She goes, hey, great. What's her name? And I said, her name is... Um, God, I did. I sold my house for us. I said, Aaron, I honestly can't, I can't remember her name. I said, I'll get back to you. So I go on the computer and I search 11021 Mount Curb Road, sale folder, click purchase agreement, scroll down through the 5,600 page purchase agreement, go to the bottom. Heidi, oh my gosh, Heidi, how could I forget her? I'll tell you how I could forget her. I haven't heard from her for seven years. <laughs> Well, wait, this was a lay yeah, 11. I sold the house in 2012 to 19. Seven years. Hadn't heard from her. Not a call, not a tweet, not a text, not a Facebook post, not skywriting, not carrier pigeon, nothing. Nothing. Not a single thing. And I'm sure she's been to seminars and listened to every speaker, Tom Ferry, Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini, me. We go right down the list of every single good presenter in America. And every one of us has said, call your sphere of influence. And it's and I'm, she probably wrote it down in her notepad at a seminar. Call my sphere of influence. Probably probably has it in her notes, but hasn't called. So I email Heidi. And the first thing I do, I go into my email and I do a search on her email to see when the last one was. And it was 2012, August of 2012. And uh, and I emailed her. Do you want to guess what the first question was that I asked her in my email? All of you listening. And by the Why way, if anybody anybody emails you with this question, you know you suck at marketing. <laughs> the first question, well, I started off, I said, by the way, Aaron, Jarena, who lives next door to me, was looking for a realtor. And I said, why don't you work with my realtor? Who is it? And I told her I couldn't remember your name. So I was, I told her I'm going to call her back. So my first question is, are you still in the real estate business? <laughs> <laughs> if anybody asks you that, just know, you either turn in your license or start marketing, one of the two. Just get in, get out. But uh, she wrote back. She responded pretty quickly, and she, you could tell the sheepish tone in her voice. It was like, oh, thanks so much for referring. Sorry you had to go through all that much work to find me. Yeah, we're, Brian and I are still in the real estate business. And she went on to say, and we are still trying to find a plan to contact our past customers. After seven years, do you seven think? Years. I don't, here's an idea. I know this is novel, but how about one of these? <laughs> oh, you pick it up and you can dial the number. People are on the other end and you can hear them. <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry to rant, but I am so, so I've been in this business since 1972 and I'm kind of, now I see why Mike Ferry got cantankerous. 
You know, I yeah. see how he got there. It's like sick and tired of how many times we have to tell you to call your sphere of influence before you finally do it. So sorry to be frustrated, but that story really illustrated the point. And and some people might say, well, she didn't call you for seven years, but you still gave the referral. And I said, imagine how many she would have gotten had I, number one, you know, heard from her every year. And and number two, how many people are going to go through the effort? I went through to find her. And the right. answer is not too many people. They're going to go online skewing the statistics that, oh, everybody's moved online. They don't re do referrals anymore. So that story really typifies it. So if this story can embarrass everybody listening, you know, get on a phone, call your fear of influence. And my assignment to you, everybody that's on this call right now, think of one person. Uh, I was listening to Lee Brown. Do you know her? Uh, Lee Brown, I don't. I'll tell you what, everybody been saying to call their sphere of influence and nobody does it. And everybody says, you know, you ought to call 50 people a day. She, and no realtor going to call 50 people a day. So how about this? Why not just call one? <laughs> I love Lee Brown. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she's a she's great. She's from North Carolina or someplace. Uh, but she says, just call one. So I'm going to just steal that line from Lee Brown. Just find somebody who's in your phone. And at the end of this, just call. Up. So then, of course, that leads you into, you know, what do you say? Um, so I, I'm trying to think where to go next. There's so many things that we can talk about. Well, well what, um, one thing, one thing, David, that you mentioned that, that I'm really interested is, is you said, look, it's not bothering them, but you should interrupt them. And I want to hear more about that because because I wrote that down and I wrote a star next to it and I went, what does that mean? Okay, to interrupt credit, somebody. So let's let's talk about give, that. I want to give credit to. I'm pretty sure I got that from Jeb Blunt in his book, Fanatical Prospecting. Ah, uh, fantastic book. So it's a great book. About eighty percent of it applies to real estate, and the other twenty is maybe more B two B stuff. But mm -hmm. um, you know, in a, again, in a live audience, I say, how many of you are married? And the hands go up. And I said, if you are married, it's axiomatic. One, either you or your spouse had to interrupt the other person. Somebody had to make that introduction. So one person had to walk up to the other and say, hello. I don't care if it was in a Starbucks line where you say, oh, you know, whatever. Somebody had to take the risk. And um, and and for, for, for me, uh, you know, I have to take that risk. In fact, uh, I was at a seminar in 2018 in... Uh, in north of England, in north of London, and I see this woman walk by, and you know I'm single. She walks by, and I go, "Oh my gosh, she's beautiful." And uh, I thought, "Oh, I really I want to say something to her, but you know I'm a scared, don't know what to say, don't want to bother." So, so as a guy approaching a woman to, it, it's that exact same fear. In fact, dating and prospecting pretty much the same thing. Um, I did have somewhat what will I call position power, meaning I had the right to be there. I was the speaker, and I was introducing myself to to attendees, which I do at all my seminars. So I did have that kind of edge. So I walked up and said, oh, I love your red dress. And she said, well, thank you very much. And uh, then we chatted a little bit more and she came up afterwards and said she loved my speech. And then I started the awards banquet and and uh, we got to know each other. And uh, I'm going to Jamaica with her next Thursday to celebrate our engagement. There you go, congratulations. Yes, this is, I mean, that was a two year year and a half deal. So I had to take that risk of interrupting. And then by the way, after I did that, she got back with her boyfriend. So basically she was now listed, but not sold. So <laughs> now I had to do follow up. So every two or three months I'd check in on Facebook. Hey, how are you doing? Are you still with your boyfriend? Yes. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> so finally she called me. So actually dating and sales are, you know, they're one and the same. So, so for, if you want to get married, if you want to date, somebody has to take the risk of introducing, interrupting. So now you get into how, how might I interrupt her without bothering her? And of course, you can go through this stupid things guys do like, oh, but, you know, I wouldn't even do some of those things. But uh, so how do you interrupt without bothering? And that is kind of a fine art. That okay. gets down to finesse. It gets down to manners. It gets down to timing. Uh, if I'm going to call somebody, I'll usually call business phones first because you they can't get mad at you for that. And if I can't get through, then I'll call a cell phone. But as soon as I hear that they're driving, I may go, hey, I, it sounds like I caught you driving. You want me to call it another time? And of course, one of the oldest lines taught in sales, Jay Douglas said, probably taught it, is this a good time to call? And um, uh, in the book, uh, Never Split the Difference, Chris Voss actually talks about asking the opposite way, said, is this a bad time to call? Because people are more likely to say no. Some of these are just language tricks, and I'm not a fan of tricks, but you can try it both ways. But, you know, you, you know, you do your friends, you call, hey, Bobby, how are you doing? Hey, did I catch you at a good time? No, I'm good, or whatever. So 
uh, so try to so pick your time. So when you're calling sphere of influence, think it through. What would be a, a prudent time to call? And if it turns out that it is a bother, hey, I'm sorry, my kids in the bathtub. I can't talk right now. Great, you know, move on. Uh, do something else. Um, I'm trying to think of some other examples. Uh, one of the reasons I like things like open houses for especially new agents trying to generate business is they're coming to you. Right. So, you know, you, the risk of bothering them is lower. I think the highest risk of bothering is for sale by owners and expires. But it's also the highest, best to see your time in order to get listings. So if you have the courage to do it. But even then, uh, knocking on a for sale by owner, you know, to walk up and say, you ain't never going to sell this house because you are an idiot. If you could do it yourself, there wouldn't be such thing as a tours. So you're stupid for selling your own home. I think that would come across as a bother. But if you call up, hey, my name is David Knox. You know, I saw you were selling a home. I just uh, do a lot of work in the neighborhood. I just want to introduce myself. And stop. And they're going to say either, uh-huh, allowing you to talk. Or they're going to go, not now. We're not going to list right now. Well, thanks for your time. I'll pop you check on you later. And then get out of there before they get angry with you. But as far as calling, if when you're dialing the phone, you're wondering, am I interrupting or bothering? You could wonder all day long. You'll make no calls if you ask yourself that question. So you pick your time, you pick your dialogue, and then make your call. I, I love it. I, I, and I love this idea that you say, look, it, it's an art, right? And and that's true of so many of the things in our business. Is, is there some things that you can nail and skill, but there's there's always there's always this, this ability to improve, which means uh, you know, I think it's an art. You get really good at it and you, you it's something you can, you can always improve on. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I do have another question here. And this is this is one that we get from a lot of people, um, because if I if I look at my phone and, and my phone book that's in there, I have uh, I have past clients. I have uh, friends and family and business acquaintances and the guy who knocked on my door and, and had a product that I thought was interesting. And it, so there's there's so many different people and different categories of people in my list. Well, how, how, how should a real estate agent segment that list in order to have it be most effective? Do you have any thoughts on, on that? Yeah, for sure. Number one segment is past customers and clients. Okay. So without a, I mean, that's, there's your most important group of people. These are people that you have earned income, uh, mm -hmm. having them do business with you. That's absolutely uh, number one. And then we'll talk about what to do with them. Um, the next would be, uh, I'm trying to think of a good word for it, um, people most likely to refer to you, maybe other business professionals, you know, doctors or lawyers or people who are in a quid pro quo opportunity, you know, okay. you know they're in insurance, you're in real estate, and maybe you refer them, mortgage bankers, title people, whatever, kind of that professional group. Other, and other of course, you can take that. Services. Yeah, and you can take that even further and set up a professional group where a lot of people do that. They set up a once mm -hmm. a month lunch and everybody, every time you get a referral, you throw 20 bucks in a basket or something and the stockbroker invests it for the group. There's a lot of crazy stuff yeah. and everybody has to come with a referral for somebody else in the group. Gotcha. So that's a, so that's something you can set up. Uh, after that, it's just, you know, everybody in your database, just everybody else. Is. Yeah. Everybody else. And after that, the segment is really up to you what you're, where you are, what kind of market you're in. Do you segment business people, local businesses, friends, uh, <clears throat> whatever, but the most important group are your past customers and clients. And, uh, and then what you have to do is you, you give before you receive, I'm going to get into some dialogue and, and purposes of making the call. But I think the first thing you need to do is give before you receive. And I'm looking at some of the things that uh, people do. I remember I'm a Delta guy. I'm a real fan of Delta. I can't wait till they get, I feel horrible that they're losing money. I really do. I, uh, for, you know, when people say, well, I don't think airlines should charge so much. Well, Wait till you don't have an airline. Okay. And then you're going to go, okay, I'll pay them everything. I think a lot of people are over tipping now. It's like, thank you for being back in business. They're over tipping. I want the airlines to come. I want them to make money because I want to stay around. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I remember I was making an international connection at AX and I got off the plane. They're holding up a sign with my name on it. And I said, I'm David Knox. What's, mm, how can I help you? They said, come with us. And uh, the gate agent takes me down those back steps, puts, you in, puts me in a Porsche Panamera takes my luggage and everything and drives me under the tails of all the jets over the Bradley terminal up the back thing to my international connection. She says it's, it's Porsche's, it's Delta's VIP service. And you go and and that's for the top 1% flyers. I haven't had it every day. Now I travel, I keep looking for the Porsche I go, where's my car? Uh, 
and the guys that are Delta 360 get it all the time. And every airline, of course, has it. But I, I've been talking about this, and that was a few years back. So it really made an impression on me that they take care of me and mm -hmm. that they call me, and I feel like I'm a value customer. So I'm more likely to say nice things about Delta on this. So all of us need to be, what can we do for our clients that would fall into the category of showing we care? And, you know, we could go through a list of 100 things. Um, one of the things that comes to mind, a guy named Bob Wolf, probably one of the top realtors in America. In fact, I just got this from him today. He subscribes to this postcard. I've never read them, but uh, uh, genius shoots at something no one else can see and hits it. You know, cute little phrases. Really doesn't matter. People say, well, what should I have? What color should it be? What should I say? Doesn't matter. One of my best friends, CRS instructor, had a great line when agents ask about what they should do. He goes, anything works and nothing doesn't. I love do it. it. Yeah, doing nothing doesn't work. So here's another one from Bob. And uh, by the way, this is a guy named John or John Baumgartner. Uh, I met him in an open house in Rancho Mirage, California in 2011. I was out looking at open houses with my, <clears throat> my wife at the time. And most of the open house agents are horrible. Well, you know, I'll be watching the game. You got any questions? Come over here or some other stupid thing. And uh, but John met us at the door and uh, he was very kind. He's come on in, take a look around. He didn't follow us around. He didn't have to tell us this is the kitchen. You know, he understood that most people know. Uh, rare people go, is this a kitchen? No, that's actually the <laughs> bathroom, but you can dine there as well. So and anyway, when I was all done with the open house, I really liked the way it came across and I enjoyed him. And um, and I ended up listing three little condos with him and buying a house from him where I still live today. And he and at the first signing, my uh, wife turns to John and says, by the way, John, is this going to be your first escrow? And he said, yeah, I was his very first customer. Very now, first. that was 2011. So what are we now? Nine years later, this is the kind of stuff he's he's sending me a multi page thing with listings. You know, he's got a partner. And he sends this to me and I keep these. Well, I keep them for two reasons. One, obviously I use it to demonstrate, but I also go down, I live on Loch Lomond Road. So I go down to Loch Lomond, look at a price so I can say my house is better than that. You know, we all, know. <laughs> we so all like to, is, we all like to know that. Yeah. I, and here's another one, a guy named uh, uh, Mike Parker. I just got this today. And some people might say, well, that's a stupid, bright, hot pink. Well, I sure saw it. I saw it in the mail today. So again, anything works, nothing doesn't. The next thing that uh, these guys do before I get into some dialogue, um, where should I start? Well, let's stick with Bob. Bob Wolf, uh, he rents out the steakhouse at the Ritz-Carlton Laguna Niguel on December 23 every year. Seats 40. He fills it. He buys the whole restaurant. He buys food, wine, valet parking, Christmas gifts, Christmas ornaments, all kinds of stuff. And he picks 40 people. Back to your question on segmenting, who, you know, how do you segment them? The 40 people that he picks are anyone who has referred big transactions to him, bought through him, sold through him. I mean, he comes up with which 40, 40 shall I invite to the Ritz-Carlton today? <laughs> and uh, I remember he invited me to it one year. And I said, Bob, this is spectacular. People are so happy to come. They bring him gifts. There's a, like a wedding table of gifts that they bring him. That's how much they wow. like it. And I said, Bob, this is this has got to be expensive. And he goes, I said, this has got to be a lot of money. He goes, $20,000. I said, 20 grand. Wow, that's a lot of money. Well, the guy makes 2 million. So 20 grand is not a big deal to him. And, he's, and he says, $20,000. And he points to a two top. He says, David, see that two top over there? I made 30,000 just from them. Wow. So basically, you know, one two table pretty much pays for it. So that's the mentality you have, which is another part of sphere of influence. Uh, you've got to invest in them. You must give before you receive in some way. At the very least, a buck, a postcard, a quarter, you know, at least do that. And you go to, uh, I think it's Prospects Plus. Uh, I know the guy there and he does a great job printing cards. And I think you can pick your templates and upload your thing. And it's all automatic, which is another thing. If you have to think about what to send out all the time, you're you're doing it wrong. So yeah. you go to Prospects Plus and give them your list, pick a postcard, have one sent every quarter. Uh, and then this John Baumgartner, again, this is Mission Hills Country Club, right? Rancho Mirage. He's now the number one agent in Mission Hills for new agents and number one. And uh, every, it's a seasonal market. I don't know how many are in seasonal markets, but he does a welcome back season party and he rents out the Mission Hills Country Club and has buffet and a little three piece band and drinks and the whole deal. And he invites everybody up. And, um, 
I think I went there a year before. I couldn't make it this year. And I was actually, I'm sorry, I missed it this year. I like to go to the party the year before I was there. I'm going to guess 150 people. And then when you go, he gives you a little gift basket with a little bow and a little chocolate in it. And thank you very much for coming. And it was meaningful. And I remembered that. And I don't know what it cost him, 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever. So, uh, and then the other thing uh, Bob does is in his, uh, he's in Southern California. Uh, the day after his party, uh, Bob said, I got to go. Uh, I got to get up early and go. Where are you going? He says, I got a trunk full of wine. I'm going to go deliver wine bottles to the guards at all the gatehouses in the gated communities. And I hey. said, how's that work for you? And he says, I never have any problem getting into a gated community. <laughs> <laughs> and I hey. said, well, I appreciate that. I said, have you ever got any listings from it? He says, yeah, the guards know everything. That's, that's, that's so, a good resource to have in those gated there, communities. So when we talk segments, like I said, I don't want to call them. I, I, maybe you can give me a name for it, but influencers, maybe we'll use that term. And, uh, and the other thing he does is it gives out the top 40 get the, the Ritz, the next hundred and some get a huge bouquet of flowers. I'm talking massive, so big that when it comes in, they've got to find a, they got to clear their foyer to put it in. So for the entire holiday season, people say, where'd you get those? Bob Wolf. Bob Wolf. That's so, great. Good for him. So that's how you can start. Next, when you do, let's go into, we talked about interrupting versus bothering, choosing your time, uh, trying to think it through. But the real way to avoid bothering people is to have a message that is favorable, have a favorable right. person reason for calling. And the three that come to mind are thank, invite, and inform. So the first one, and this is something absolutely Every single person on this presentation today must do beginning right after this is to thank their past clients for business. It's not a sales call. It's not even a service call. However, we are at the end of this pandemic and there are certain things that are probably going to continue. So everything I say today, you may have to wait till you can do all of it because I, I want what I say today to be working beyond this. But first thing is to thank them. Hey, Jim and Karen, I am giving you a call today because I just, uh, you know, as we get into the, this year, I just call and I want to say thank you for your business. And actually for the next, I don't know, month or two, maybe the first thing is out of your mouth is you call your past clients. Hey, Jim and Karen, this is David. I want to call you up. And uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I just want to see how have you guys been doing in the midst of all that's going on in the world? And then just shut up. Just shut up and let them talk. Listen, uh, right now they're locked down. They'll probably talk to a vacuum cleaner salesperson right now. <laughs> if there was ever a time to call your sphere of influence, now is it. They're tired I, of talking I to agree. their family. They're tired of Zoom. They, they want to talk to another human being. If you call them up and say, hey, I want to tell you how to check your tire pressure. Really? Yeah, all right. Let me get a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> So first thing, you can do it in either order, but one of the one of the messages, I just want to check in with you guys as a valued past client. I just want to see how you're doing. And then the second thing, and then say the other reason I want to call and just I want to say thank you for your business. I appreciate that you guys purchased through me a number of years ago. And I just want you know, I still it still means a lot to me or listed with me or or referred. And I'll make this promise to everybody. And uh, if I'm wrong, you email me, David at DavidKnox.com. I make promise that every single past client you call will ask you about business or the market or how you're doing. Guaranteed. And I've been making this statement on Zoom calls for two months now. And, and I say, how many of you called your past clients? And, you know, five out of 100 hands go up. How many of them asked you about your business? Same five hands go up. I was on a Zoom uh, doing kind of a happy hour Zoom with my friends who were in Palm Springs and here. And early on in this, they said, David, how are you doing with the real estate, with all this? Are you still in business? Is your company shut down? What's happening in real estate? Has everybody stopped buying and selling? I went, no. I said, I've been doing two, three, four, five Zoom meetings a day, four days a week. I said, I've shot more videos in the last two months than I had in the last year. And I said, we've got people buying, people selling, multiple offers, over full price, and they were all completely flabbergasted. And these are sharp business people. And they thought the world was dead. So my message to realtors today is call every past client first and let them know to, the rumors of your death have been greatly exaggerated. The rumors of the death of real estate have been greatly exaggerated. People are buying. People are selling. Because owning a home transcends everything. 
In fact, it's more multiplied by what's going on. And tragically, I, and I don't say this with any anything other than just a statement of fact in having conversations with people that there may be a flight out of cities into the suburbs. People are probably hired, hi, tired of maybe high density housing and uh, maybe want to get a friend of mine owns a condo in downtown Minneapolis. And he said, you know what? I He's going to go back to Western suburb Wyzetta. So there may be, be the, uh, that change. So anyway, call them. And the best thing you can do to past customers is thank them. So now, what about if you don't have past customers and clients? So if anybody's listening to this and, you know, I don't have past customers and clients, uh, you can't thank them for your business. So the next thing you can do, and again, it may not be appropriate now, but I'm still going to present it. And that is invite them to an event. Invite them to an event. Making it axiomatic, you must have an event. What right. might that event be? Uh, for a new agent, it could be, uh, in fact, you know what? You know what? I just thought of something. For the first time in four months, I went out, had lunch with three guys. We're all part of a sports car club. And we're sitting around. I said, you know, it's really good to see you, John. Good to see you, Swan. I said, I just realized I haven't had I haven't had lunch with anybody in four months. I said, it's just nice to be with another human being. So maybe now actually is the time to start with small events. And you pick three, four, five people and say, you know, I don't care how you promote it. Uh, but say, I don't know about you, but let's do a post-lockdown celebration, you know, safely. Let's let's meet at TGI Fridays. We'll do outside dining and buy lunch for four or five people and maybe do that. So I think as events open up, start doing those. So what would they be? Best events or charity events? And, uh, um, you know, if you wrap it around a charity, people feel good about getting involved. So if you have a charity uh that you're passionate about whatever that might be you know it could be just you know dog rescue and your whatever it is i'm not going to try to steer you on that uh but you could wrap it around a, a charity event uh some of the women that we feature in uh, southern california the williamson team uh they get these multi-million dollar homes they pick a charity now they're way at the other end these they're you know they got a band they got valet parking uh they got uh jewelers might come and demonstrate jewelry um uh, what else she has there? Got a photographer, a red carpet, um, food. So local restaurants will deliver, you know, food and appetizers. And basically it's a party. And when you come in, you sign in. So now she has the names and addresses of everybody. And then she posts post party Facebook photos. So everybody's on and everybody's tagged. So those are some big events. But in the video I did with them, uh, yeah, my I, if people are looking for training videos, I do virtual training, real estate training by David Knox. You can sign up for a free trial, but the Williamson team says, you know, even if you're a new agent, you can have people over for whatever football party. Of course, they say that they're not playing football. So, so many of the events that I want to present, you can't do them anymore. So you're going to have to be creative. And for people who say, well, there's not a lot of good events out there. Well, there's not a lot of good events out there for anybody. So if you're the one who rises above it, which, by the way, that brings up another point. If there was ever a time to gain market share, now is it? Now, it, is it because people are hiding in their closets waiting for this to pass? Yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. I, as as we've done, gosh, I don't know, fifty plus of these episodes now in the last few in the last few months. Uh, that's that's pretty general consensus. Is people go, yeah, there's a lot of agents in my area that are hunkering down, hiding yeah. under the bed, mm -hmm. waiting for this to pass, and. The agents that we've had on this ep on this podcast, they're the ones that are saying, I'm scrambling right now to fill the vacuum that that's created. Oh and my uh, and it, so so let me just ask a follow up question to that comment is how does how I mean, right now, more than ever, I, I feel like agents should be pursuing their sphere of influence because everybody knows one or two realtors, which means that everybody is in the sphere of influence of one or two realtors or more. Yeah, right. And. And if everybody else is hunkering down, that means that the opportunity for me to be reaching out to these people is is far greater maybe than it's ever been in the past couple of years. Is, would you agree with that? Well, without and that's that's true now. It was true after every major serious event, stock market crash, you name it. Um, 
We know that the number of transactions in some markets have just gone down 10, 15, 20 percent. People just say, that's it, I'm out of here. But the number of active realtors, I think, has gone down by half. So the per agent transaction ratio is way up. And it's always been that way. Now, after, you know, post Corona, everybody's going to have their act back together again. And now we're equal. But now you have a chance to be um, have a point of difference. And um, like just being able to be a virtual agent, if you can do a virtual open house, if you can do a listing by Zoom, we've got a whole series of videos on how to be a virtual agent, how to set up a, a video conference space so you look good with the proper headroom, proper lighting, uh, proper audio, all that stuff. You know, I've got a light here so I can kind of adjust the lighting. You know, just fundamental stuff so you don't look like a door when you're doing Zoom. Um, so, yeah, this is a chance to grow. And if you take, there's some businesses that, that are doing better specifically a re, as a result of the pandemic. And I realize juxtaposing those in the same sentence is, sounds perverse, but how about Zoom? Making more money now than they've ever made their stock as high as. How about Netflix? Netflix making more money than ever. Their stock is high. I'm glad I own Netflix because it's gone nuts. Why? Does any, and then I ask uh, audiences questions. Do you begrudge Netflix for making money? No, because you're watching them every night. You begrudge yep. Zoom. Peloton, the exercise, you know, they got all this crap about, you know, doing a some kind of sexist commercial. But you know what? They're up 60% because people still want to exercise. Yep. So my message to realtors is you can go hide the closet, duck and cover, and go away, and we probably won't miss you. But you could also be the Zoom, Netflix, and Peloton of realtor and go out there and help people. And uh, I was on a Zoom a few weeks ago, and one of the, the attendants, He's put in the little chat. He said, uh, I had a, another real estate agent shame me for the idea of giving or handing out items and being busy during this market. She shamed me. And I went, I don't mind you duck and cover. Go ahead and do that. But when you pop your head up and you shame somebody else for helping their clients and making money for their, their family, I'm not with you on that. At that point, you, you have lost me. That's dysfunctional. Yeah. And then I contrast that. I, I'm not going to show it now, but uh, my fiance, Mandy, works for Spicer Heart in the UK. And uh, she had to hold down the fort and take care of everything. And there was this couple who were selling their home and they were deathly afraid that the transaction was going to fall through. And after Mandy put it all together, they were so happy they wrote a one page letter to the president of the company and said, Mandy was your last person standing. She took care of us. And they said uh, the proceeds from this house were to pay for my wife's mother's health care she was suffering from dementia in a in a hospital and the funds for her care have literally run out so wow. had that property not sold they they wouldn't have been able to care for her so i remind realtors what you do isn't just listing and selling and making money you are helping families in their lives and, and whatever that is it's important to them so you got to decide to be in it um so the next uh, third thing you can do again thank invite inform so past clients thank them um the referrals fall into that too. Next is invite them to an event. And maybe right now, think of what kinds of events you could do it. Uh, I was going to say a virtual Zoom event, but I think people are so Zoomed out right now that I, I, they're sick of that. But find something you can do. Think about it. Um, and then the third is to inform. And it's not as exciting as the other ones, but you could certainly call up and, and just call up, and, hey, Jim, this is David Knox. I am giving you a call because I've had more of you know, hey, the, Jim, this is David Knock. By the way, is this a good time to call? Yeah, it's pretty good. Great. Well, I'll tell you why I'm calling. Uh, first of all, how are you? Well, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make up dialogue as I'm going, but just follow the natural course. How are you doing? Hey, the reason I'm calling is I can't tell you how many people think the real estate business absolutely died during this pandemic. And I, I realize it's incumbent upon myself to just let people know that we are busier now than we've been in a long time. There's a pent up demand. And I don't know if, if any of this information is important to you, but it directly affects your home. So whatever. I think, oh, well, thanks very much for calling. And then if they ask you about the business, of course, in this case, you were calling to tell them about it. Um, and I want to give you the, the number one dialogue that I would use, two, two things that I teach for dialogue for referrals. One of them is, and by the way, it may, we may not be at a point where it's politically correct to use this dialogue, but I still want to get to it. The question is, by the way, how much longer do you plan to stay in your house? How much longer do you plan to stay in your current home? And when you run into people in the grocery store, whatever, having a conversation, you guys still up over on Ivy Avenue? Oh, gosh, that's a beautiful area. I love that. How long are you, you guys been, what, five years now? Yeah, I think so, five years. How much longer do you think you'll stay? I mean, you can kind of just slip that in. You know, funny you should yeah, ask. Easy. Yeah, just an easy question. How much longer do you think you're going to stay there? And if they call you and I say, well, are you just trying to get a listing? Oh, yeah. 
I know a lot of people love that area. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I'm asking. I want to help you. If you want to move, I want to be there for you. Don't hide it. You're a salesperson. Quit being so... If you're that afraid of being a salesperson, go do something else. You list, you sell. That's what you do. Don't be embarrassed about that. Um, and same thing when you call your past customers and clients. Again, test the water. Read the room. And if you feel you can ask in some way, say, you know, you guys have been locked down for three months. How, how's your home? How did your home work for you? And they might Too say, Too small? We're ready to upgrade? Yeah, <laughs> they might say, oh, it's great. You know, the fourth bedroom was perfect. Or they'll say, I'll tell you what, baby. When this damn virus passes, we're going to burn this place down. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> and you might find it. Um, so, again, I want to know how much longer they plan to stay in their home. And I want to find that out in as gentle a way as I can. The second question, and again, this is read the room. Uh, of all of your friends, who do you think would be the next to make a move? Of all your relatives or of all your neighbors, who do you think would be next to make a move? And again, uh, all of that falls into context, reading the room, sensing when you can do it. Um, one other thing, and then I'll turn it back over to you, and that is time blocking. Uh, realtors, salespeople, I'm including myself, I don't have a lot of discipline. I've heard of it. Uh, people talk to me about discipline. I go, tell me more. Uh, and I find on a day when I have Zoom schedule, like when I have four in a row, my my day is perfect because I know what to do. I know when to do it. I got my checklist. And then when a day comes where I don't have any Zoom, it's like, what should I do today? And I look at my dog. Buddy, what do you want to do today? You want to go for a walk? I mean, it's just so, e so easy to do nothing. It's easy to do nothing. So yeah. we all need to figure out discipline. And that means time blocking. That means you pick a period of time, an hour, you, you know, some people call it their hour of power. There's a million ways to do it, but you time block your week. You know, uh, you know, Sunday's going to be open houses, Saturday for sale by owner expired Friday, date night with your spouse. Um, you know, Monday follow up from your open houses, Tuesday, perhaps a meeting, but somewhere in you say, okay, I'm calling sphere of influence for 59 minutes on this day and this evening and just put it in there and time block it. And, uh, and I find out if I write the word workout in my little time block weekend, I just work out, work out, work out, you know, I just put it in every day. Because if I don't, I forget. When I see it, I say, oh, yeah, work out. I'll go down to the gym and I work out. If I don't see it, I go, oh, oh, yeah, that's, I knew something. So, and, and I take it, and the trick is to take it from your to-do list and put it in your calendar. That's the trick. Everybody's got a to-do list. You know, we got tons of them. Every once in a while, you take a look at it. Well, and they're all they're all so long that unless you start moving stuff into the calendar and saying this is when I'm going to get this done, we never do, right? Yeah, it's got to be got to be on the calendar. Of course, if you move everything to calendar, now it is it's, now it's just a junked up to do list on the calendar. So you you pick the things that okay, this is what I'm going to do. But time blocking is is the secret discipline um, for getting this done. And I'm going to turn it back to you. I got various other things I can talk about, but I'll see what you might have to ask. Well, there, there are a couple of questions that have come in. So I want to address these and then we'll see where we're at in, in terms of time. Um, and so thank you, everybody who have who have chimed in with some of the questions. This has been fantastic information. So thank you, David. This has been we could end it right now and it would be it would be fantastic for everybody okay. who's here. But let's go to these questions. Stephen Shipler asks, he says, how often? is good on average for touching base. So let's 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 ask this question as it relates to past clients. Uh, again, we don't want to be a bother. We do want to interrupt, but how often should we be interrupting without becoming overbearing? Yeah, it's a great question. And 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 anything I say will not be a perfect answer because it's in context. It depends on the market. It depends, it depends on everything. So it, I begin with by saying it depends. But if I had to lay out a plan that I could start with I might do uh, a postcard every quarter. I mean, okay. I just, Something I, I every quarter. That. I would just, you know, pick a postcard that goes out every quarter to everybody. Uh, Dave Beeson, buddy of mine, D-A-V-E-B-E-S-O-N, DaveBeeson.com has a product called Letter Writer. And it's seven years of letters. And David has always been very art, an articulate writer. And I think you can buy that and put it in your CRM and it'll automatically send them out. So that leads. The other thing is having some kind of uh, email that goes out um, maybe the other month. Uh, telephoning, I, I guess I'd say once a year ought to be okay. 
more than that has to be on a case by case basis. In fact, uh, and I'm trying to think what would be a good case. Uh, there's a woman in um, Toronto who tells me what she does, uh, Sylvia. She obviously knows her market very well and she watches all the new listings. And anytime she sees a listing come on the market on a street where she has a client, she just lets them know. Good and, excuse to get on the phone. Yeah, just by the way, uh, if you wanna know what, what the values are in your market, the one four home sound for you just came on the market for 875. So if you're, if you're tracking the progress of your home's value, this would be a good, thing. And, and you know, people love to hear that. Yeah. So, so that's one of the things she does, um, tries to match new listings on streets with her past customers and clients. Um, you know, Brian Buffini, who I have so much respect for, is a great guy. Uh, you know, Brian, you know, Brian, you probably heard him talk about the pop buy. And, uh, you know, where you're just driving around a neighborhood where you've done a lot of business and just be out and around and uh, you see somebody on the street and pop by and say hello, something like that. Um, another thing you can do is be fa physically face to face with them. And that's where you start handing out stuff. You know, the, you know we've all heard the pumpkins, the, the pies, the, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's another event I just thought of is you can have an event that's really not everybody in one room, but you can say, well, heck, 4th of July is coming up. Um, you could find some red, white, and blue pie, go to a bakery. And by the way, these bakeries, I'm sure, could use your business say, hey, how much if I buy 200 pies from you? And uh, and then send out everything in your database and say, and on our 4th of July, we got this great pie. Come by and pick it up. Um, you can also do an RSVP where you say, if you'd like a pie, please RSVP. We'll have one for yeah. you because you don't want to buy 200 pies and throw 100 of them away. Um, you could even have it at the bakery and just say, come on down to the bakery on Saturday between two and three. And, you know, we're going to social distance, but we'll hand out your pie or whatever. So those are the, kind of like that. Uh, neighborhood knocking. The other thing is this isn't necessarily sphere of influence, but once you get a new listing, the best thing you can do is have a neighbor's only open house. You can meet the people that way. Don't have to worry about bothering because they're coming to you. Knocking on the door, you have to worry about bothering. But if you say, hey, I just want you to know I got Tom and Susie's home uh, listed and this is a courtesy call to see if you guys might have any questions about it. Um, I think that's fantastic. In fact, uh, I, in, as, as a consumer, as a homeowner, I'm thinking, you know, a, a home two doors down for me just went on the market a couple of weeks ago. And, and the question, anytime a home goes up for sale on my street is, well, what's it listed at? Because again, that's a gauge for me to know where my values are at. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that would be, that would be an amazing experience from the homeowner perspective to have a realtor call and go, Hey, do you have any questions about the home that's for sale? Yeah. Because I, I, that's, that to me is, is such a fantastic idea. Courtesy call. Do you have any questions about the home listed right around you? What a great script. What a great, a great reason to call. Yeah. And all the things I've talked about work whether or not you ever ask for a business as i say i would like to know you know how much longer do you plan to stay in your current home that, that that's the most valuable information you'll ever get out of anybody any time and the second thing is hey you know and find a way to set up say we got a market here so crazy we got we got property selling for over asking price uh anything that comes on the market between x hundred and not, and this hundred sells and i'm calling you i need you i need a favor from you guys if you don't mind of all of your friends if you had to guess who do you know that has a home between X and Y that might be the next to move? So you just call them up and say, hey, I'm asking, I, I need a favor. I, can't, I cannot find a property for these people. So I'm, I've gotten desperate. I'm calling my friends and seeing who they know. So you can just be honest with them. Um, one of the things you do is a customer survey and um, that takes a little bit more work and you can do the physical or the online and just say, hey, in an order, in, in an effort to be uh, more valuable to you. I'd like to ask you a survey. Do you plan to buy, sell, remodel, um, refinance? And uh, and one other thing, this is something Bob Wolf does. And this is way more advanced. This takes some skill. And this is probably for more of the top agents uh, listening here today. And that is to become a vendor resource. And the categories would be home purchase, mortgage, title, insurance, et cetera. Uh, okay. Basic home utilities, you know, garbage, burglar alarm, pool service. You, you go down to all the all the people that service a property, and you come up with a list of everybody you know that you like and that you trust. Every all every realtor has their favorite vendor, 
And what you do is you get that list together. And then you talk to all the vendors and say, look, I'm going to put you on my preferred vendor list. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I've had great success with you. I appreciate what you've done. So uh, when people ask for your pool service, I'm going to refer you. But here's the deal. If anybody calls that was referred by me, you call them back within an hour or pick your time. You call them back within an hour. You give them. You don't have to cut your price, but give it be the, you know, fair. And if there's ever a, a dispute ever on anything, you fix it. You fix it. Even if you have to cough up some money that you don't think you should have paid, you fix it. And if you don't, you're off the list. Because I've had people say, well, isn't there a risk of referring? Yeah. Yeah, but you know, live your life worrying about everything. So uh, if you pick, you know, if you pick good vendors and you have an agreement with them, you, you lower the risk. Now, some people say, should I send out the list? No, you you want people to have to call you to find these people. And you let people know, by the way, uh, these are all the people that we can help you with. You know, after all my years in the real estate business, I've come across some of the best service people in this city. And I have uh, I have a list of all the best people. So if there's ever a time where you need anything from pool service to yard cleaning to dog pet care, babysitting, you name it, you know, feel free to call me at any time and I'll do my best to help you find somebody. And I've actually had realtors say, well, what a pain. So all these people are going to be calling for pool service really do i want to deal with all those calls and all i want to say is you're an idiot for even asking and i'm not going to i'm not going to answer that question <laughs> I, I wouldn't actually say that but i'm thinking it's like really you've got some of the best people in your entire sphere of influence calling you and you think there's something wrong with that and they're calling you because they want a favor and you can help them and f and have them be grateful that you are a sharp person and you know real estate and you know oh. <laughs> so Bob doesn't mind it at all, and he gets calls. And uh, in fact, when I wanted to buy a uh, an engagement ring for my fiance, I called Bob, and he, he had a jeweler. He had a jeweler. I knew he did. He's got everything. And he had a jeweler that he's done hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of business over the years, hundreds of thousands. And uh, so I called him up. And so I, well, I called Bob and said, hey, Bob, I know you must have a jewelry contract. Yeah, I have a jewelry contract. What are you, what are you looking for? Well, I'm going to look for an engagement ring for me. I've got just a guy. I'm going to have my wife, uh, Jenny, uh, we'll call him and we'll make sure we call him. And um, I said, here's his name. Here's the number. You call him. But wait till we call him first. So they call and say, by the way, David Knox, one of my best friends. He's going to call you. He's going to look for I want you to take really good care of him. He's my best friend. So I called him up and I said, basically said, I don't know who you are, but Bob and Jenny want me to take good care of you. So I felt good. You know, so yeah. those are the kinds of experiences you can create for people. And in no way are you like, do you want to list your house with me? I mean, you don't have to be that person you don't want to be. You give before you receive. You become a valuable person and people remember you. And that's the first step to be referred. You got to be remembered. Well, and you said one thing a little bit earlier that I that I is the one that's burning in my memory, right? The quote from David Knox today is, is uh, you, you list and sell homes. Don't be embarrassed by it. That's, yeah. that's, that's what we do. And if you're ashamed of that, then find something else to do. Yeah. Otherwise be bold about it. And I think that that's uh, I think that's a, a fantastic thing. We've got some other questions, but we're actually, we're actually at the end of our time here. Um, maybe we've got time for one more short one, David, if that works. Well, I'll answer them quickly. If you want to fire through a few of them. Yeah, so here's here's one from Amanda Smith, and Amanda, she's she's a, a a regular listener, so thank you, Amanda, for chiming in. She says, "What do you recommend a newer agent do to gain the most market share right now?" So we've talked about past clients, and and uh, and and we've talked about the opportunity right now, and how great it is for agents to gain market share. Somebody who doesn't have past clients, what's the number one thing that you would recommend um, of, of the things that we've talked about that they could do to gain market share right now? Well, find the underserved market in a lot of the ways. I mean, uh, I'm going to answer Amanda's question the way I would if I moved into a new market and I didn't know anybody. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I know it's old school, but and people say, oh, that's old school. Yeah, but there's a lot of money in it. I do open house for sale by expired. I mean, I would just do that because nobody else does it. They're underserved markets. Uh, realtors are afraid of doing them right now. I'd be more inclined to probably put a gift bag on the doorsteps of for sale by owners expired with a nice letter and hand sanitizer and basically say, out of respect for your privacy, I will not. Uh, I will not telephone you or contact you in person, but 
we're finding pe things selling in a very short period of time, and I'd be happy to tell you our virtual selling plan. I'm sure you've heard of Zoom. I'd be happy to set up a, a Zoom video conference with you and ask some of your questions. And to an expired, I might say there's only three reasons why your home hasn't sold. And if I could have a virtual consultation with you, I'd, at least if nothing else, I can at least tell you why it didn't sell. And then open houses, if you got to do them, if you can do them physically, great. Virtually, then then do them that way. Uh, and after you get your very first listing, work the heck out of that neighborhood. And uh, I'm David at DavidKnox.com, or just go to DavidKnox.com. Our office numbers there. I'm happy to give a detailed answer or more. I Second love that. Part, you got a sec. I love you. We, we we've got one last here. It says, uh, "What do you think of cold calling using a triple line dialer for newer agents to generate seller leads?" So somebody, and, and then he mentions, he says, "I'm time blocking four hours a day to do this." Somebody who's brand new, right? We've just you just said, look expireds uh, by owners and open houses. That was the thing. Um, and and uh, and this agent, Bobby Leach, he's spending four hours a day using a dry, a, a, a triple dialer calling out to, to seller leads. Is he on the right track? I don't know. I guess I have to talk more. Uh, cold calls are the hardest way to make money. I know people do it. Uh, I don't know how this dialer works, but if it's one of those where there's silence on the phone before they pick up, if you do that to me, I'm punching you in the face, blocking your call. So I, I, I'm, I, if it's working great, but I just know I just got some stupid spam call. And I hate them. Um, so I think you got to be careful. I think they can be really bothersome uh, nowadays. Uh, if you're following up on a lead where they turned themselves in on a website and they expressed interest. Oh, yeah. Call them all day long. Say, hey, thank you very much. I noticed you call the property at such and such. And I'm just following up on your interest. And then, you know, how soon do you want to buy? How long have you been looking? If you found something today, what would you do? Uh, if it's just flat out cold, if you if you got the courage to do that, uh, I'd be having you. Go to the door for sale manners, expires, and open houses. If you got that kind of courage, you make a ton of dough. But I also want to be careful. If it's working, I don't, I don't want to get in the way of that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah. If it's working, I think you have to, you know, ask a question and pause. I might want to listen to the dialogue. But if you call up and say, hey, have you been searching the best multi purpose portable fish tool? There are certainly a lot of the market. Could you use one that only cuts and skills fish, but offers your personal protection, your homeowner's car? Isn't that a no? You got to call up and say, hey, I'm calling and regarding your interest. Is, is this a good time to call? Build in silence so people can go, mm, yeah, it's okay. Or no. Yep. Love it. Well, thank you so much, David. I appreciate it. Uh, guys and gals listening, if there's if there's questions that you have that didn't get answered, if uh, if you didn't get those chats in there, make sure to, uh, to uh, I know that David, you've given your email address a couple of times. Uh, you can always reach out to Red X through our different channels, through our, uh, our, our Facebook, through our YouTube channel. Uh, and always, we'll be back on here in a couple of days. David, thank you. Thank you so much. I think that there's pages and pages of notes that people, even just me hosting, I've got over a page of notes that I've written down things here that I go, I don't want to forget that. So oh, thank good. you so much for the time that you've, uh, that you've taken out of your, your busy schedule to be with us. Um, if you'll hang tight, we'll go over a couple of things just after the show here. Uh, guys and gals, thank you again so much for being with us. We've got another great, uh, another great podcast coming up on Wednesday. Uh, with Johnny Perez. That's going to be fantastic. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll discuss some other really neat things that are relevant to the times that we're, uh, that we're experiencing right now. Uh, again, uh, you can always find us on Facebook, on YouTube. Our customer forum is a fan fantastic place to go if you want to connect with other prospecting real estate agents with other Red X customers. Uh, as always, thank you so much. Happy prospecting, and we'll see you in a few days. Thank you very much.